<clears throat> All right. The, uh, the final one then here at the end of this chapter is what he calls the ad hominem defense, right? And he doesn't really put this as part of the big three, like right? the nature of evil or the contribution of evil or evil in God's agency. This one is kind of separated because he's going to suggest that this really isn't a, a, an attempt to solve the problem of evil, right? Yeah, so what is this ad hominem defense? Well, he says some Christian apologists have approached the problem of evil on the theory that the best defense is a good offense, <laughs> right? Thus, when an unbeliever questions the consistency of God's sovereignty with his goodness, right? How can God be sovereign but yet allow evil to happen if he's good, right? Uh, the apologist then, in this instance, with regard to the ad hominem defense, replies that the unbeliever has no right even to raise the question, or he cannot, on the on his basis, even distinguish good from evil, right? And so uh, Frank tells us the point is correct as far as it goes, right? He's argued earlier that moral values presuppose the absolute personality revealed in Scripture, and so if there is no such God, uh, then the world is governed either by chance or by impersonal laws, neither of which commands the loyalty required by moral obedience. And so um, to, to, to values and that sort of thing. And so, yeah, to a certain extent, right, the, the point is correct. But he doesn't think this one uh, solved the problem of evil or even attempts to solve the problem of evil. <laughs> right. Right. It's it's not a, a, a bad tool, but again, uh, the offense versus the defense <clears throat> is is the distinction here. So, you know, the by what standard why, uh, are you able to call anything evil? Uh, you know, we're just all protoplasm swimming in, in the universe, <laughs> and we just happen to bump into each other, and some of us just overtake another person. Well, that's just how I'm able to survive because evolution has deemed me the ability, uh, uh, given me the 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 um, the chance to, uh, uh, to assert myself in, in such a way. And so that that's just what happens, uh, when I, um, robbed the convenience store is I was asserting <laughs> my will for survival. And so you can't hold me responsible for immoral actions. Boy, that that's, that's really charged language that I don't appreciate. And so, um, th that's, that's obviously one way to take it, but again, we're still left with the question. So if, if you're talking about a debate, where someone says, um, you know, uh, uh, the presence of evil, or why is there evil in the world, saying, well, you know, you give me a definition of evil, th there's still left on your plate, what is the definition of evil, and then why does why does it exist there? All right. All right, so it's also useful to bring this point to unbeliever's attention. He, in a way, has a more serious problem than the believer does. If the believer faces the problem of how there can be evil in a theistic world, the unbeliever faces the problem of how can there be either good or evil in a non-theistic world. What so the, so the unbeliever has two problems, <laughs> right. and we only have one, so yeah. we win, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out, but you have to figure it out twice as much. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just have another life to, to do it in as well. As, so <laughs> you, you've, you've, you've only got 80 years, so good luck. <laughs> well, valuable as this point in is, is in and of itself, However, it's not really a means to the answer of the problem of evil. It's an ad hominem argument. It's against the person, against the man. That is, to, it addresses the person rather than the issue. The unbeliever asks, how, how can you account for evil? How can you, how can you look at uh, the, uh, this news uh, article and say that God is real? And we reply that, well, you have a worse problem. How do you, <laughs> how do you determine what is evil? Again, not a not an incorrect question, but it doesn't answer the uh, explicit uh, question at hand. He may indeed have that problem, but we are there. Um, we don't therefore uh, have the answer to uh, his question that he asked at the beginning. 